Today on Devotion 4, we are talking about the scripture verse, Matthew 6, 33. On Devotion 3, that was the last thing that was talked about, was um, receiving all these things of God, His kingdom, and His uh, righteousness, and His favor, and His blessing. So, I'm going to talk about what you need to do to receive these things. So, if we look in Matthew 6, 33, I'm going to read the King James Version of what that says. And this is written in red, or what I also like to think is blood, because it's Jesus speaking. He shed his blood for us, to, so to me it's written blood. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So... When we look into scripture, we need to look for the specifics. I just want to touch quickly on um, Jesus speaking in parables. And when he speaks to the disciples, he's not speaking in parables. Parables are for those who were on the banks listening to his message. Those who are uh, just Sunday pew sitters that may just attend church on Easter and Christmas and they don't actually take the Word of God and make the sacrifices Monday through Sunday um, everywhere they go in every area of the life um, to live for God. They are the ones who laugh at what God's Word says and His principles and don't believe it. So the disciples are the exact opposite of that. And if we are to be disciples, we need to come up higher with God and we need to dig deeper in His Word and learn more about His Word. And when we read His Word, it needs to jump out at us more and we dig into it. So if we look at this scripture real quick, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's telling us to seek the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's principles and His ways. Um, that is not talking about location in that. The kingdom of heaven is the location. The kingdom of God is God's principles and ways and what he says is right and wrong, wicked, and um, what's righteous and unrighteous and good and evil. So we are to constantly be seeking what God's word says. We are to pray without ceasing. We are to be looking and learning and studying and getting our doctrine degree, degree in God and learning about him. Also, that means drawing closer to Jesus. That means to, um, to walk with him, to talk with him, to live and breathe for him, to put him first. God is about first in everything. He wants to be first. Um, he wants to be first in the first day of the week, which according to the Jewish calendar, Sunday is the first day of the week. So God should be put first and you should be in church. We should be in church Sunday mornings. We should put him first in um, our money, in our time, in our love, in our serving, in our thoughts, in our walk, in our attitudes, in our words. Everything about our life should put God first. So he's telling us here as well to put God first. So look for his word. Then it says, and his righteousness. So we are to look and research and read and study and find a good preacher who is preaching the truth of God from the King James Bible because that is not in any way... Um, altered like a lot of Bibles are and it doesn't take away from God's Word it's there what what hurts and what feels good what is a blessing and what is a curse so we need the truth of God's Word so listen to a preacher who is giving you reference scripturally to what they're saying so you can look it up in a King James Bible and make sure that they are feeding you the truth so we're seeking God first. We're seeking his righteousness first. His righteousness is what he says is right and good and um, what his ways are, irregardless of what the world says, what we feel, what we think, because our mind and our feelings um, cannot match 
God. He thinks and He knows things that we don't know and, and our brains cannot go there. So that is one reason why we should trust Him because He knows our todays, our tomorrows, our forevers, what's to come. Um, he is the first and the last and we need to grow into a relationship with His Son to know Him more, to know who He is, to recognize when He is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit, when He may be, you may hear something clear in that still small voice, it may just be a nudge to, mm -mm, don't, don't really do that, or yeah, you need to go do that, don't go this way, go that way, kind of thing in our daily life to know how to glorify God and live the best life um, and honor God back for sending his son to die for us. It's about respect. It's about love for him and giving back. When you love somebody, you want to do for them. You want to do the things they ask you to do. You want to do the things that make them happy and that makes a good relationship and a happy environment. And that is what God and Jesus Christ want for us, but it takes our part working with their part to make this happen. So we've seeked first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it says, and all these things shall be added unto you. So he was talking to the disciples about how he knew they needed food, they needed um, drink, they needed clothes, that they these basic needs he knew they needed. So he was saying, I'm going to take care of you, but you need to be seeking my kingdom first. We're going to work together is, is a lot of what this is saying. So I'm here for you, but you're not going to know how to live for me, how to um, do what I tell you to do to accomplish the goal. You can't be a true follower if you don't know how to follow if you don't know what to follow it's it's kind of like going to school you know you don't know how to be a cop unless you've went to school and you've went to BLET and you've had a teacher which is Jesus to tell you follow my ways follow these are the laws of your state these are the laws of your county the laws of your city and so you have to have a teacher and you follow that and then you bring that out into the world and then you still have a teacher or a shepherd, a head lead person, your chief, your sheriff, you know, then you have sergeants and lieutenants, captains, you know, the list goes on where you are to find out what that leader says and you follow that. So it's the same thing. So you, we are to find out what Jesus says are his um, principles of God and what his righteousness is so that we can fall into that so that we know how to live um, and then we can pass that along. Then we can pass along the truth to the world because we have received the truth because we are walking with truth. So let's just look at the study down here as well too. And then I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible because I love how the Amplified Bible um, just kind of gives you definitions of word. The King James Bible can be a bit difficult to read. I do have to look and see what definitions are. And I do definitely recommend a study King James Bible so that there is descriptions down at the bottom for you to look at. But in 633, and this actually adds some of 34 too, so I'll just read all that. Um, for verse 34 says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So the study part says, This portion of the Sermon on the Mount is summarized by the statement, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The disciples who have pledged their allegiance to the king must continue seeking the kingdom and its righteousness. The present imperative form of the verb continue seek indicates a continual or constant seeking. The contrast between the spiritual and the material is again emphasized. The believer is to seek first the righteousness that is characteristic of God's kingdom and then all these things and in parentheses it says material things 
shall be added unto him. When our need, not even when our priority is spiritual, God will take care of the material. For where God guides, he provides. We need not even worry about tomorrow, for sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. This means that every day has its own troubles and challenges to be responsibly handled without worrying about the hypothetical problems that could arise tomorrow. So this is all about following your shepherd. We are sheep. Jesus is a shepherd. If you want to live the way, the truth, and the life and have the most abundant cup running over, pressed down, shaken together, running over, blessed life, and pass that down not only to... You know, to live that life, to model to your family, your children, your relatives when you go to work and out in the world to make more disciples, to bring, um, to live out God's will. You're living out God's will when you are seeking his word, putting him first, and you are applying that in your life. Just like the Bible says, you know, we're not to be hearers only, but doers also. Don't just hear the word by sitting on the church pew going to church on Sunday for an hour and a half and not applying that to your life. That's not biblical. That's not a disciple. So once you put Jesus first, you are living out his life, then he knows what you have need of and he will supply it, even material things. I'll make a key note that God is a prosperity God. He has streets of gold, diamonds, rubies, onyx, emeralds. They're all in heaven. He has unlimited resources. He owns everything. He's sovereign. He owns all the money. Our money is not our money. It is God's money, and we are to be good stewards of that. So the Amplified Bible for 633 says, But first and most importantly, seek aim at strive after his kingdom and his righteousness which is his way of doing and being right the attitude and character of god and all these things will be given to you also if you're just obeying god if you're living for him it is much easier to have a fellowship with god do his way and live a blessed life than to and receive and let him take care of you than to live in the struggles of life it doesn't mean there's not any struggles it, that living a christian life is problem free it's not because as you draw, draw closer to god and you get in this fellowship with him and you're obeying him you start learning things and you start growing and there are orchestrated and authored struggles that God has for you for you to grow in him and for you to go higher and even to receive more it's just like you know when you write a will out you write a will out for um, the ones who were closest to you the ones who knew you the ones who were good to you um, you know, and like your children, and you know them, and your spouse, you know them, you walked with them, you talked with them, you know, you spent time with them, you spent um, quality time with them, and you did things that that, that that spouse asked to make them happy and things that pleased them, and you did that because you loved them, and a relationship with Jesus Christ mimics a marriage that's just, that's at least one of the reasons why we are called the bride of Christ because um, it, it, it mimics um, it just like the the leadership you know it's God the father it's the husband it's the wife and the children that's just the order God made it nobody's any less than anybody but it's just the way that it is ordered and so, I also real quick had read today um, Charles Stanley's devotion, and it was talking about God's favor. And he had put in his devotion, it said, once we have salvation, does it matter how we behave? And it said emph emphatically, yes. We are to walk in a newness of life and consider ourselves dead to sin. This doesn't mean we won't sin 
because only Jesus is perfect. We are not perfect. Every day I sin. It may not be a curse word. It may not be I've killed somebody. It may not be that I've committed adultery. You know, these obvious sins. But there are unconfessed sins that we can do that and have on us that we don't even know because... Um, you know, I'm not trying to go down another road here either. I'm trying to stay on Matthew 6, 33. But there's just so much that I have learned that my thoughts go to different roads that can apply to this. But I just don't want to go too deep on that. But, um, you know, like even... I, I never knew that manipulation was a form of witchcraft. But it is. So, you know, I thought witchcraft was just wands and spells and witches and witches brew you know and things like that and it's not so that just shows how deep you can get in God's word if you will take the time to fellowship with him and read his word and learn and study in it and it will take you higher and it will take you further in life and into a more blessed life and when it takes you higher that puts you into a higher position of authority and the things of God, the, the power of God, because we have inherited from Jesus what he has, then whenever we bind and loose things, that great power is within us because we understand what we're doing. We, we know what we are applying. We know what we are binding and loosening. And so that is just um, an example. So yeah, God's grace is not a license to sin. So I choose to know that I'm not perfect, but I'm walking blameless. And that means that although I know that I'm not perfect, I'm striving hard each and every day to live for the Lord, knowing I'm not going to meet up to that expectation, but it doesn't affect my efforts in any way. Um, I'm continually striving towards a higher level, towards a higher respect and obedience to God so I hope that this has blessed you I hope that you learned from it and I will see you next time on Devotion 5